Hi, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be painting and decoupaging this desk organizer that I found in a thrift shop. And uh, it already has paper on it. It looks like it's factory made, um, but it's not my style. So I'm going to make it more for me. Inside of this is in really good shape, so I'm probably not going to paint because it also looks like it's really hard to get in those spaces. So what I'm going to concentrate on is cleaning it up and I'll paint the outside and then decoupage paper probably on all the sides where it already is. So I decided to use these two papers. Uh, they're by Decoupage Queen and this is a gorgeous Harlequin that has some other it's like layers and layers of, of print. And this one is called Birds in Flight and they go together really well. And what I'm gonna be doing is taking it apart. Since you can see it doesn't fit, I have the choice of putting it in the middle or putting it to the side and I could put some stamps uh, or stencils or I could take it in pieces and put it on and that's what I think I'm gonna do. So I'll be showing you how I connect the uh, pieces of it. I already took the trim off. I was gonna use it for another project and then decided not to. So that's all ready to go. Uh, so what I need to do is take it apart because whenever you have hinges and all that, you really don't wanna paint over it. You wanna take everything apart. I'm gonna clean it all up. I use crud cutter and I'll give it a little scuff sanding to just give the paint something to grip onto, and then we'll get started. I'm going to use Rust-Oleum White to paint everywhere that I'm going to decoupage. Uh, the rest I'm going to be painting Dixie Belle Dusty Blue, and we're just, I'm going to do two coats of both. We're all set to start decoupaging the organizer here. And I'm gonna start with this piece here. And we're going to sort of cut this into pieces and put it together and then connect it with paint. And what I'm gonna do is tear the paper. You can either use a little bit of water with a brush and you can outline. You don't want to go in a straight line because that'll look too, too like planned. You sort of want to make it look random. So we'll do that. We use a little bit of water, and then it just pulls away. And you have a nice tattered edge that then you can blend in with paint or stencils or whatever you want to do. Just come across here. So we have that. So we can go ahead with this. And I'm using, today I'm using Wise Owl Matte Varnish. So just pour some out. Now I have this lined up where I want it to be. Okay, so I'm just going to hold it here. So what I do is I just lay a coat down and then lay this right over top. Okay, so for this corner, kind of liking, I think I'll do the birds, the, the flowers down here. I'll come back tomorrow. That'll be dried and then we will. 
sand that off at the edges. So we can put this aside and then we'll come to this part, the entire back with the varnish and then lay the paper on it. And you just wanna press it down firmly. So we'll just put another coat on top of the varnish and let it dry. The next thing I'm gonna do is connect these two pieces of the rice paper with paint and a product called modeling paste. This is from Finnebear uh, and it's a thick paste and when you mix it with the paint, it'll, it will give it a little texture. So I'm gonna take a little bit of this paste and mix it in with the paint. I just use these little cups here and then we're gonna pounce it on with a little bristle brush. You could use a chip brush, something a little bit stiffer. I'm just going to take the paint and the modeling paste and dab it on. Okay, so that's what we end up with. We'll let that dry. I'm gonna start decoupaging the sides of the box. Since I have a little bit of varnish left in here, I'm just going to uh, do the back of this. And let's let that dry. I sanded off all the edges and I'm going to do a coat of the Wise Owl varnish before I get to uh, doing something in this space to make it look cohesive. I'm gonna do some raised stencils on the decoupaged paper. And what I'm gonna use is, it's called icing paste. And this is the Vintage Gold. It's a very thick product. You have to use some kind of spreader. And I'm just gonna hold it down carefully and wipe it across. It doesn't need to be super thick in height. It doesn't need to be real high. So you just want to wipe it across and take off the extra. Okay, and you just pull it up. And we'll do some more over here. So just do the same thing again. So you just want to try and hold it down. You don't want to to get underneath of the stencil. And then try to pick it up by the edges. So that's all we're gonna do on there. And then I thought for the box, I'm going to do some of these swirls. So I'm gonna try to hold it down. <laughs> Carefully. You can see that. And I hope you can see that. Just a little shimmer, a little extra texture. I'll do one more right here. Okay. I decided to add a few stamps to this piece. So I'm gonna keep it gold. I am going to just brush the paint on very lightly. The trick to stamps is doing it light. You don't want to gob it on because then when you press it down, you won't have good definition. Place it down and give it a gentle press. Make sure you hit all the edges. 
and there you go. I'll just do the edge here. And maybe one more up here. And there you go. Okay, so that will dry. And we're going to do a little antiquing paste on the edges of the box. So I have, uh, this is vintage antiquing paste. Uh, I believe it's from, yes, yeah, Stamperia, Stamperia, not quite sure how I say it. And I'm going to use a brush and brush it on all the edges. A little bit here on my glass mat. And what we're doing is we just want to blend all the edges, make it look a little aged. So the directions say to put on a generous amount and then wipe it with a cloth. And then it has to dry. So we already sealed everything a few times. So since this is not a water-based product, it's typically the last thing you do. So then I just use a shop towel and we'll rub it off. And there we go. It's a nice aged look to the edges. And I'll continue that all the way around. And then we will come back and our last step will be to put gold around the trim. Our last step is to add some gold wax to the edges and um, all the, the flat little parts here. I'm going to be using Stamperia. It's their uh, gold ceramica. It's a gold wax. So I am going to put it on all of the edges here. And depending on how heavy you apply it, it will dry. Uh, I would give it till tomorrow, about 24 hours and um, it will be completely dry and waterproof and still be nice and shiny. My organizer is complete and it, I think it came out really well. Uh, one helpful hint I'm going to tell you is whenever you're working with a box, jewelry box or something like this with screws, make sure to take note of the screws because sometimes they're different sizes. So I didn't pay attention to which screw came from where and there were actually four short ones and four, sli four slightly longer ones and it did matter where they went back. So uh, when you're taking it apart, one idea is to get a paper plate and you can actually label it left, right, and tape everything where it came out so it's going back exactly the way it, it was put together and then you won't have any issues of um, things not opening and closing properly or just the screws not going in right. Other than that, I think it came out lovely. I love the uh, aging and the raised stencil and a little touch of gold. And I do sell what I make, but oftentimes I keep them, and I might be keeping this for my paintbrushes and uh, maybe some little uh, pots of wax can go in here. I just think it came out cute. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, if you could like and subscribe, maybe pass it on, write a comment. If you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to put a link to... Uh, the Decoupage Queen and also TH Decor on Etsy. It's where I find a lot of my products. So thank you very much and have a great day.